Now that we've taken a look at what a power series is and how to work with a power series, we're ready to actually do some calculus with power series. The question is going to be, how can power series make derivatives and integrals easier. And the brief answer to this is that often calculus is easier with a series than the function. For example, if the function f of x is equal to some power series from n to 0 to infinity of the constants times x minus its center a raised to the n power, then we know that the derivative of the function would be equal to the derivative of the power series. Well, what's nice about a power series is it's a sum of many terms that have the exact same form. So we can take the derivative term by term. Or really, we can take the derivative of the entire sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And this c sub n is a constant. And the exponent we know comes out front. And then x minus a stays the same. And then the exponent is decreased by 1. Just using our exponent property, we've taken the derivative term by term. And we can do the same thing with the integral. The integral of f of x dx is equal to the integral of the power series. Well, going to the original power series as n goes from 0 to infinity, this time we keep the same constant out front. And we know that we increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. Now, there's a couple adjustments that we need to make to these definitions, though. First, let's look at the blue one, the derivative. When we take a derivative, remember the first term in a power series is a constant. And the derivative of a constant is always 0. So actually, it doesn't go from 1 to 0 to infinity. It actually goes from 1 to infinity, because that first term's derivative is 0. So we don't need to include it in our derivative. With the integral, we make up for that first term by having an extra constant. Now I'm going to add the constant before the sum, because I don't want that constant to look like it's part of the sum. But the power series antiderivative does have a constant plus the sum of the antiderivative. And that kind of sticks that extra term back in there. So minor adjustments to the intuitive formula, just a couple things to be aware of. So if that's true, that we can just take the derivative term by term and the antiderivative term by term, what we can do is we can use what we know to find derivatives and antiderivatives. We know that for the function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x, we know that's a geometric series sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, where the first term is 1, and we take the x to the n power. Based on what we know, we're going to find a power series for the function g of x equals 1 over 1 minus x squared, which is really equal to 1 minus x to the negative 2. 
Well, you might notice that that's very similar to the function that we know that we started with at the beginning. So we know that the function f of x is equal to 1 minus x to the negative 1. And if I take the derivative of f, f prime of x, we would bring the exponent out front, bring the exponent down by 1, times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of negative 1 is positive 1. I'm sorry, the derivative of negative x is negative 1. A negative and a negative makes a positive, which means our derivative is 1 over 1 minus x squared which is what we're trying to find a power series for. So we know the power series for the first original function is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And we know the second function is its derivative. So we'll take the derivative term by term. Remember, we have to have n equals 1 because the first term goes to 0 to infinity. Bring the n out front. And we have x to the n minus 1. And we have just found a power series for an unknown function because it's the derivative of a known function. So if we can make that connection with something we know, we can use calculus to find the new power series. Here's another one. What if we want to find a power series for h of x equals the negative natural log of 1 minus x. Well, again, the function we know is 1 over 1 minus x. We also know that the antiderivative of f of x dx would be the natural log of the stuff, 1 minus x. And then we have to divide by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1. And so the antiderivative of our known function is the negative natural log of 1 minus x. Well, if we know the power series for the original function is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n, we're just going to integrate that to get our new power series. Don't forget, we need a constant plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. One little thing that remains, though, is what is that constant c so we make sure we're equal to the original function? Well, to figure out what's going on with that constant, we'll take the 0th term and see how much it is off by. So if we plug 0 in for our x, we get negative natural log of 1 minus 0, which is the negative natural log of 1, which is just 0. So our constant in this case is equal to 0. So we don't need the constant here. It's equal to 0. We're just going to say it's equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And actually, all that n plus 1 stuff kind of seems silly to me that we're shifting 1 over in the numerator and shifting 1 over to the denominator. Instead of shifting 1 over in the formula, let's shift one of our n's over starting with n equals 1 to infinity. And now it becomes just x to the n over n. So that's how we can use calculus to move from a known series to a power series for an unknown series. If we can connect the known series to a derivative or antiderivative of the known series, we can just take the derivatives term by term, and we end up with our new power series. Another place that calculus comes in handy is with partial fractions in power series. So let's take a look at that really quick. Partial fractions. 
and power series. And we're actually not going to take the antiderivative, but we're going to use the idea behind partial fractions to build an unknown power series. Let's say f of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x times x minus 2. And we want to build a power series for this. Well, if we were to break it up into two fractions, a over 1 minus x plus b over x minus 2. We could use uh, what we know about the form of a geometric series to change these into geomet two geometric series. But first, we have to figure out what a and b is. So if we multiply across, we get 1 equals a times x minus 2 plus b times 1 minus x. If we let x equal 2, we end up with 1 equals b times negative 1. So b is negative 1. If we let x equal 1, we end up with 1 equals negative 1 times a. So a also equals negative 1. And so what we end up with then is that f of x is negative 1 over 1 minus x plus negative 1 over x minus 2. OK, let's see if we can massage these to get them in the right format where we have a geometric series form. Remember, a geometric series form is going to be a over 1 minus the ratio. The first one is actually already there. The second one we're going to have to do a little bit of work with. One thing we can do on the second one is we're going to switch the order. So we have negative 2 plus x. That way, the variable is on the right side. And then like before, we can divide out a negative 2 so that we just have 1 minus x over 2. And then that negative 2 needs to move up to the numerator so that we're in power series form. So what we finally end up with is negative 1 over 1 minus x plus negative 1 over negative 2 is 1 half over 1 minus x over 2, which means we're dealing with a power series, two power series added together. We've got the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the first term is the numerator, so that's the negative 1, times the ratio, which we're just subtracting x in the denominator, so the ratio must just be x to the n, plus the second power series, which has a first term of 1 half because it's in the numerator, times what's subtracted in the denominator, x over 2 to the n power. And maybe I want to clean that up a bit. We've got the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. I want to factor out ultimately an x to the n. So I'm putting that n onto both top and bottom because it's not a power series unless we're multiplying by x to the n. Everything else becomes that constant out front. And so when we factored out that x to the n, we're left with negative 1 plus a 1 over. And in the denominator, we've got a 2 and a 2 to the n. So combine that together, we get 2 to the n plus 1 is our coefficient. And now we ended up with a power series that represents this function. We were able to do that because our partial fractions allowed us to break it into two geometric series looking parts. And we could make each part into a geometric series and factor out the x to the n to end up with our final partial fraction power series. One last point then to wrap up this video. Let's take a look at how we can take a power series and find a function. 
doing the exact opposite process we were doing before. Before, we started with the function, and we worked to find the power series. Now we're going to start with the function, which is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over x plus 4 to the 2n minus 1. And we're going to see if we can build this into a function that's equal to the sum. Well, one thing I notice is if we're trying to make it into a geometric, geometrics like to be start at n equals 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift this power series down to n equals 0, which means we need to account for an extra n, if you will. So where we see the n, we're going to call it n plus 1. And that'll shift the 0 over 1. So if we replace that n with n plus 1, we get 1 over x minus 4 to the 2 times n plus 1 minus 1. And a little bit of algebra in that exponent gives us 1 over x minus 4 to the 2n plus 2 minus 1 gives us a plus 1. Well, I'm going to keep trying to massage this as we work to figure out where our geometric series form might be. When we see that addition inside an exponent, we can break that into a product. So let's see what that gives us. The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over, and I'm going to do the first power first, x minus 4 times 1 over x minus 4 to the 2n. Well, notice we're getting really, really close. Oops, it's a plus 4, isn't it? I've been writing this wrong. Make sure we're not changing our signs halfway through the problem. Sorry about that. We're getting really close to that uh, geometric form because the geometric form says we've got our first term times our second term, which needs to be raised to the n power. So if we could write that second part as something to the n power, we'd be in business. And if we go as n goes from 0 to infinity, of 1 over x plus 4 times, what's nice about a numerator of 1 is it can be written as 1 to the n. So if I pull out an n power, we're left with x plus 4 squared in the denominator. In fact, we could even write that as 1 over x plus 4, the entire thing squared, because the 1 squared doesn't matter. And now what we've got is we've got our first term, which becomes the numerator, and the ratio, which is subtracted in the denominator. Recall that the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a times r to the n is equal to the numerator a over 1 minus the r. So in our case, the numerator a is the 1 over x plus 4. Over the denominator, 1 minus the ratio that's multiplied is 1 over x plus 4 squared. But this is really an ugly format. So to get rid of the fractions and fractions, remember we've got x plus 4 squared in the denominator. So we're going to multiply by x plus 4 squared on top and bottom. It's going to distribute through. And so what we'll end up with is a single x plus 4 in the numerator and x plus 4 squared minus and the x plus 4 is divide out, so it's just minus 1. And we end up with this final function that is equal to the original sum that we started with. So sometimes we can kind of parse this power series apart to find the pieces of the geometric sum. 
if we are, in fact, in a geometric form. If it's not a geometric series, we're going to need a new game plan. And that's what we're going to take a look at in our next video. But for now, take a look at how we can take derivatives and antiderivatives of known power series and unknown power series, and then also how the partial fractions can help us find power series and break up a power series to find a function. Good luck, and we will see you in class.